Hi everyone, it's Michael. Thanks for coming back to the Planner Tutorials Hub. We're always striving to deliver excellent video tutorials and uh, hopefully today is no exception. So I woke up this morning and thought, what do I want to teach today? How can I help some folks out there do better at planning and what can I deliver that hopefully is going to give them some new insights into how to use Primavera. So what I came up with is to revisit this concept of uh, reflection projects. So if you're not completely familiar with reflection projects, we've already done a great video tutorial on the site. So if you're not there, go ahead and check out plannertest.com tutorial uh, menu and go down here to reflections. Okay. If you're not completely up to speed on what reflections are, there's this tutorial here we did using reflections in Primavera to merge scenarios back into your project. That's going to help give you a starting point for uh, reflections and how to use them. What we're going to do today with reflections is show you how to update project plans, uh, how to process updates from subcontractors who deliver you, say, a monthly update. How do I look at that update and roll it into a master project plan? So that's the topic today. What I've got here is my rail car maintenance facility project plan. And if we scroll down here to the construction section, you can see I have two contract sections. So uh, actually a few, but these two we're going to focus on the grading and drainage contract and the maintenance and building contract. So if I expand those a little bit, you can see we've got this general section under the grading and drainage contract. So we're going to assume that the grading and drainage contract is managed by a subcontractor. They are delivering us updates on that contract, perhaps via uh, XER file. And then below, we also have the maintenance building contract and same sort of thing. That's a subcontractor, a different subcontractor, and they're delivering updates to us on a monthly basis. So the period that we're going to focus on is this period here I have highlighted with a curtain on the Gantt chart. They're going to deliver us updates for this section. We're going to use reflections to roll those updates in and kind of approve them before we roll them into the master project plan. And that's what the reflection project is going to give to us. So I'm going to turn the webcam off and we're going to get started. Let's walk through the process that we're going to follow to uh, set things up before we get started. So you'll notice I'm on the project screen here. I have my RF0D-1. This is my rail car maintenance facility. And this is the original project plan. It's the plan I've been working in that I've been doing my own updating in. Now I want to capture those updates from my contractors on a monthly basis and roll them in. So we need to set up uh, a few things first. Here we go. So here's the setup. First thing we want to do is to create a reflection project for each contractor. If I'm working with multiple contractors, I'll create a reflection for each one. So that's step one. Step two, we're going to export that XCR and we're going to send it to our subcontractor in this scenario. They're going to update the plan and send it back to us. We're going to re-import that updated project using the update feature. Then we're going to review, merge the reflection in. And if we're OK with all the updates we've been sent, we'll go ahead and lock them in by rescheduling. Let's start by creating reflections. Right click on your project and choose Create Reflection. Primavera does a little bit of thinking. You can see it's come back. It's created my rail car maintenance facility reflection. It's called RF, RF0D-2, and you can see it's a what-if project. We're going to create another reflection, the same project. Okay, great. What I want to do is just differentiate these. So this goes to my Acme subcontractor, and this goes to BOSO, BSO. Those are my two subcontractors. Now, one thing I want you to notice here is that when I create a reflection project, 
there's a field here called source project. And you'll notice that the source project is essentially is a pointer back to the original project plan. The reason I wanted to bring this up is that there is a bit of a gotcha, and that's why I wanted to outline these setup steps for you. If you send this XCR without creating a reflection project over to your subcontractor and they update it and bring it back, now we don't have the ability to do the merge. For example, look at this project. This is one that came back from Acme, and notice it has no source project. Uh, linked to it. So I, I can't really do that merge functionality. The, the option doesn't show up. So if that does happen, uh, there's a workaround for you. The workaround is essentially to take the updates from this and to copy them into a reflection project, and then we can do a merge. Okay. So a little bit of manual work on your part, but in case you forget to do these setup steps that I've outlined, then that'll be the workaround you'll want to follow. So now that I've created these two reflection projects, the process I would follow would be to open one, open each of them one at a time, and then essentially to export them to an XCR file. You can ignore that error. Okay, so I'll export them to an XCR file, and then I will uh, you know, send them off to the uh, contractors in question. Those contractors will update them and send them back. And uh, let's see what that looks like now. To import an XCR file and update it, I need to have that, X, uh, that project open first. So I'll go ahead and open my Acme project. Go back here and do an import. Again, you can ignore that error. Okay, so there's my Acme import file. So I'm going to go ahead and choose it. And this is what we want to see. We want to make sure that this import action says update existing project. And again, we'll just make sure we have the selected project. We'll go ahead and import. Great. So we will uh, we'll do the same thing with the second project. Now that I have both of those imports done, I can actually do the, the merge process now. And this is where the whole, this is where everything kind of comes to a head. This is the point of this. Let's start with Acme. Let's go ahead and merge our reflection into source project. In case the screen isn't familiar, what this is, is a review and a comparison of the data that's changed in the reflected project versus the original project. Up here we have the choice to group these changes by subject area so you can see they're grouped here by activities and it lists each activity and it says here's the value before it was merged here's the value after it was uh, after we would perform the merge and so what you can see is this activity mobilization was not started. Now it's in progress. It was uh, 20 days of remaining work. Now there's only five. And we've indicated an actual start of July 7th. Okay, and, and again, you can go through and see all the, all the changes according to these projects. Now, I tend to like to work in this activity view. And what that gives me is gives me the ability uh, to choose which updates will be merged in with these checkboxes. So once again, we have the ability to kind of review um, mobilization. This is what's changed. And you can see that now we've got an actual start for this resource assignment as well. As I merge these changes in, if I ever need to go back to the project, uh, how the project is at this moment, I'll save copy of that as a baseline and store it. So if I ever need to re revert back, I can always restore that baseline as a project and I'm back where I started. Okay, I can also create a backup file if I want to save it to my hard drive. So I can have a baseline and an XCR file. I'm going to stick with the uh, baseline for now. Also, after merging, what do I want to do with that reflected project? Well, um, we can keep that reflected project around and then you'll be able to go and view it or you could delete it if you want because those changes are incorporated in. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and merge these changes in. Merge process completed successfully. Great. So the Acme project is now merged into my rail car maintenance facility original project. I now do the same process with the second project. Open her up, right click, merge into source project. So let's look at the report for the BSO subcontractor. In fact, what we're seeing here is we're seeing an in progress activity uh, be marked not started and a completed activity be marked not started. What is happening here? Pitfall. When we're working with multi-project merging, we need to be cautious that we do not overwrite the previous merged information. That's exactly what's happening in this situation. We're overwriting the ACME projects updates with uh, non-updated activities from this BSO project. So this is where those checkboxes come in handy. Here I have that we need to use those checkboxes to subtract, select only activities from the current subcontractor. So let's go back to Primavera. So these activities are not from the current contractor. And the way I can tell is because that we have um, proper activity numbering here. So this, these are all C10 series activities. And the real updates from this contractor are the C2G guys, 2G. So these two I wanna include. And these other guys I want to leave out. There we go. Okay. So as you can see, if I kind of roll these up. Okay, so I've left those guys out. I'm going to include just these two activities from the 2G, C2G series. Let's go ahead and do the merge. Let's go back and have a look at our project now. You can look at these dates and notice that I have the appropriate uh, actuals set on those dates. Okay, so here are my remaining durations and basically you can see that the information that we logged in there has come across properly. In fact, some information that doesn't show up in the report are the uh, percent complete. So here we logged information about physical percent complete on all of these activities. And although it doesn't show up in the report, it does come across. Why it does not come across, I can't say. I'm not completely sure. My gut would tell me that I'd like to see that stuff in the report. As we go down to the second subcontractor, again, we can see that that information about the physical percent complete has come across as well. So the last process would be essentially to uh, reschedule the project and then to go ahead and compare it to the baseline, see how we're doing based on those updates. That's all I have for you today. Hopefully this tutorial on reflections has been handy. And again, if you like it, please let us know. Leave a note in our comments section. Have a great day.